So this is a pretty common question I get whenever I talk about WordPress development. A lot of people want to know how much PHP knowledge and experience do you need to be a WordPress developer? Now, it's a little bit tricky because the phrase be a WordPress developer, that's sort of subjective and everybody will have their little criteria and you'll have these know-it-alls who will rant and rave or about you're not a real WordPress developer unless you do this, this, and this. Sort of like you get that same thing with PHP or just development in general. You know, you're not a real developer unless you know C Sharp or this or that. And you always have their arbitrary and subjective criteria, which often is usually the thing that they're able to do or that they're doing so that they can say that they're the real developer. In any case, like I said, it's arbitrary and, and sort of subjective. So what I want to go with to answer this is how much PHP do you need to know to be able to build a WordPress pl plugin? And the reason I think that's instructive, it's a little bit more uh, objective. And generally speaking, and this isn't a hard, fast rule, but I would say generally it takes more PHP knowledge to build a plugin than it does a theme. So if you know how, if you know enough PHP to build a plugin, you can prob probably are going to know enough PHP to build a theme. Again, not a hard, fast rule, but I would say generally speaking, that's going to be the case. So if we look at the question of how much PHP do you need to know to build a WordPress plugin, th in that case, it's a lot less than, than you might think. And I can sort of draw from my own experience with this. The, the first WordPress plugin that I built was something that I called Community Press. Now this was, you, you guys have listened to the show for a while, no, I'm sort of an old fogey in this development community, but this was way back, probably early, mid 2000s, if my memory is correct, maybe a little bit uh, later, mid to late 2000s. Anyway, this was before BuddyPress. This was before things like Mingle and some of the other community plugins that are there. I, I don't even know if Mingle exists anymore, but this was in particular before BuddyPress kind of came in and, and dominated this space. Nothing else really existed at that time, which is why I wanted to build this plugin. I had some clients that were building membership sites and MySpace and Facebook were sort of coming along and people were wanting to integrate some of these social features into their sites. And so... I was working on this plugin that I called Community Press. Now I had big plans for it. I wanted to sort of roll it out and make it a lot like what Buddy Press was. But at the time, all it really did was it had a sort of simple edit profile page where instead of it being the back end sort of maybe quote unquote ugly WordPress edit profile page, it had a front end one where they could edit some of their information there. And then it had a sidebar widget. And the, and the sidebar widget basically showed you know, logged in, logged out status. And then when it was clicked, they it would take them to their profile for them to be able to edit it. So it wasn't anything super complex or super fancy. And at the time that I wrote this, I knew very little PHP. I would say that it was sort of simultaneous, but WordPress is one of the things that got me into learning PHP because it was really the first sort of first thing that I worked with where I realized hey, I can actually build stuff with this, with what I know with PHP. And so I knew simple stuff like, you know, echo and custom functions. I knew some array stuff, but not, I mean, I was by no means very advanced with PHP. But what I did is I really dug into WordPress. And so I knew a lot more about how WordPress worked, its hooking system, you know, action hooks, filter hooks, that sort of thing. And then it's built in functions that, and so instead of having to learn a bunch of PHP, WordPress already had a, a, a bunch of stuff in it that would do a lot of that stuff for me, which allowed me to then be able to actually build stuff without having to learn all of this complicated PHP. And so that's sort of one of the advantages of WordPress, especially if you're new to development. And so with that little bit of PHP knowledge, I was able to build my plugin and then it sort of happened. I was a customer of this company. And they sent out an email to their customers looking for anybody that was developers. I applied. And as a part of the application process, this plugin that I was working on had come up. And it helped me to get hired with this company. And then now today, that company is still my number one client. So uh, again, with very little PHP knowledge, I was able to not only build a plugin, but land a client and keep that client all the way through to this day. Now, I know that's anecdotal, but I think it sort of illustrates 
uh, when what's important when you're first getting into WordPress development. I believe it's a lot more important to dig into WordPress, its hooking system, its built-in functions, how it sort of works in the back end, the WordPress uh, database class, the uh, WP query class, those sorts of things. It's a lot more important to get into that at first than it is to be a PHP genius. You can sort of, if you have a basic understanding of how PHP works and know some simple PHP things, you're going to be able to build uh, plugins in WordPress. And I know a lot of really good PHP developers who turn out to be terrible WordPress developers because they don't take the time to learn how to do things the WordPress way. And so instead of using the built-in classes and the built-in functionality and the built-in functions and so forth, they sort of reinvent the wheel when they don't have to and ultimately end up doing it in a worse way than the way that it's done inside of WordPress. So WordPress has a ton in there to support you as a developer. And whenever possible, you should be using that stuff instead of sort of rolling your own. And because of that, it requires you to know a lot less PHP. Now, of course, the more PHP you know, then the more advanced WordPress WordPress plugins you'll be able to build. And as you go through this and are building plugins, you should be learning WordPress or learning PHP along with learning WordPress and building WordPress plugins. So those two things do sort of go uh, hand in hand, but counter to what a lot of the uh, snobs might say, I think you can get going building WordPress uh, plugins a lot faster than you might think. So at the end of the day, don't be afraid to, to, to sort of dive into it. And again, focus more on understanding WordPress, its built-in functions, its built-in classes, all the things it has available for you to use and doing things the WordPress way as opposed to, you know, trying to learn a bunch of PHP, reinventing the wheel, rolling your own, that sort of thing. Now, I, this actually came up, I, I the reason I even am addressing this question is because, it's sort of funny, because Cora suggested it to me today. It was one of the things that uh, I, I got as a, a suggestion, suggested question to ask. And it's sort of funny because you guys who are listening know that I just uh, rolled out a WordPress course. I just launched my WordPress plugin course where I teach you all of this stuff. So it's a little serendipitous, I guess. But in that course, this is sort of what we focus on. It's not really a PHP course. It's a WordPress course. So we teach you. I teach you some of the built-in functionality in WordPress like custom post types, like short codes, like the proper way to handle form submissions inside of WordPress using their hooking system and, and some of the the pages that they make available for handling that sort of thing. So uh, it really takes you inside, deep inside the WordPress way. And, and you, there's a ton of WordPress built-in functions that you're going to learn how to use. And, and, and just WordPress functionality and all that sort of thing. And I explain why we do certain things versus sort of creating our own and so forth. So if you're someone who wants to get into WordPress plugin development, maybe you know a little PHP already and you really want to dive into understanding how WordPress itself works so you can build uh, plugins that that work the WordPress way and are done the right way, the proper way for for doing things inside of WordPress, then I think this course is a great way uh, to do that. Anyway, you can learn more about that at johnmorrisonline.com slash WordPress course. That's all together. Again, johnmorrisonline.com slash WordPress course, or you can go to store.johnmorrisonline.com. It's just scroll down a little bit. It's there as well. So anyway, that'll do it for this epi episode today. If you liked the episode, I'd appreciate it if you'd share it with someone you think is wondering about this question could benefit from hearing this. Also, all the past episodes and all the subscribe links for Android, iTunes, TuneIn, all that you can find at johnmorrisshow.com. And finally, if you'll rate and review the podcast over on iTunes, I'll greatly, I'd greatly appreciate that. That helps sort of spread, spread the word about the show. Also, I will give you module one of my PHP 101 course for you leaving an honest review over there. So all the details for doing that and getting that module one are at johnmorrisshow.com. Just click on the start here link at the top. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.